it is another African Cup of Nations moment here on Muftao Nabila Abla YouTube channel, your home of exclusivity. As we've promised, before March Day 1 in the tournament, we are going to nose into the camp of the Black Stars and bring with you all the interesting stories you've got to know about the Black Stars. On the opening day prior to the game against Morocco, we had mentioned to you the probably starting 11, which indeed came to pass with only one omission. And on March Day 2, we had 100% success of the lineup that was going to face Gabon. That game ended 1 1. Today, guess what? What is likely to happen? Again, are we coming with another 100% success? It could just be probable. But you just hang on and follow us gradually as we get to the part where you'll be so excited to know who is going to start, who is not starting, and why the person is not starting in this team. But first, Let's hear from the head coach of the team, Milovan Rajvac, who has been comparing the Black Stars of 2010 to the Black Stars of 2022. He says, in this current crop of players, he doesn't have the arsenals that made him an indomitable side when he took over the senior national team in August 2008. <laughs> Pa dobro, tada smo radili dve godine i napravili, vodili smo i lokalnu repustaciju i arepustaciju, sa lokalnom smo igrali finale Afrike i sa arepustacijom i otišli bez primjenjenog gola na svjetsko prvenstvo. Stvarno, za dve godine fenomenalna rezultat. Ovdje radimo tek tri meseca, ušli smo ovdje malo takmičenje, imali smo četiri utakmice za kvalifikaciju svjetskog prvenstva i sad smo imali dve utakmice. U suštini ja sam zadovoljan sa igrom, međutim nismo našli još taj taj delić koji će nam obezbediti neku konstantnu dobru igru i jednostavno kad krenemo u seriju da idemo daleko. This period lasted for more than two years, you know, so you, we played also with the local Black Stars, we, we, we reached the finals of the Chan, also um, the finals of the Afghan, so it, it takes time to establish the team, to set up every four pieces of the puzzle together. Uh, in today time you see what happened in only three months and, you know, we don't have even friendly matches anymore, we played four competitive matches in two in October, two in November, and we even we plan to have three friendly matches for the preparation period. We could only play one and without all of the players at disposal. So these are the circumstances. It's not an excuse. These are different times because of COVID and everything. And to establish a team, to set all the pieces together, uh, to, to complete the puzzle, it takes some time. But uh, it, as you know, we are growing, and I strongly believe this team has the potential and has the quality well, in that press conference that he attended, he was followed by defender Jonathan Mensah, a player he worked with in his first tenure as head coach of the Black Stars. And according to Jonathan Mensah, Ghana is poised to ensure that the book qualification to the next round of the tournament when they come up against Comoros on Tuesday. Um, I believe every team got the up and downs and uh, you know, the first two games, you know, we got a point from the first two games. Uh, we still have a game to go. I don't know about any problems going on in camp, you know, it's been uh, like this for us, you know, the first time he was in charge of the team. I remember us losing 3-1 against Albicos and then we went on, you know, through the tournament to the final. So, uh, all we need to do is just win this last game and then progress to the next stage. We have uh, lots of uh, debutants on the team, so blending in with the experienced players, we knew it was going to be tough, so uh, we are there to guide the young ones you know, through this phase and then we move to the next stage. Having heard from Milovan Rivert and Jonathan Mensah, what is next? We share with you some of the other stories that you have been following all this while. First, we start with Mubarakwa Castle and followers of Muftao Nabila on Twitter might have seen that prior to the head coach Milovan Rivat naming his squad to the campaign in Doha 
I had reported that Mubarak Wakaso was injured and I was unsure he was going to be fit for the tournament. The other fears my sources had revealed to me were that they were unsure he would kick a ball in the tournament. It appears my sources are right. First two matches, Mubarak Wakaso is here to kick a ball in the tournament. Prior to the game against um, Comoros, that was when the Black Stars had their training session. His knee was wrapped in ice pack. Clearly, it shows us that Mubarak Wakaso might not be available for the game two against Comoros on Tuesday. He took part in training a bit, but went off to train individually. That's what uh, sources who monitored the training session have said. Now, at this point, if it is that Mubarak Wakaso is not available to participate in this tournament, the bigger question everyone is asking is, why was he taken to the tournament? Well, he was taken to the tournament because players like the likes of Alfred Duncan, whom we understand that Milovan Rydberg actually needed for this tournament, was dropped. He was dropped with the explanation from official Dom that he picks and chooses the matches he wants to play for the Black Stars. So officialdom thought the coach Milovan Rivaj should not take him to the tournament. We understand Milovan Rivaj has had an extensive conversation with Mubarak, um, Alfred Duncan. And the guy made clear what his thoughts are. And some of them, I do think, are not for public consumption. But what we can say on authority is that it does not appear Alfred Duncan is actually willing to play for the Black Stars until such a time he feels that the current leadership of the Ghana Football Association are not influencing who plays and who does not play in the Black Stars. Then let's talk about Mohamed Kudus. Mohamed Kudus is also another player. Many of you have asked questions. Is he coming? Is he not coming? When is he going to be available? We had reported that our sources had revealed there was a possibility he was going to be part of the camp the gone by weekend. Unfortunately, he could not make it. Again, followers of Muftao underscore Nabila on Twitter might have seen that I reported on Saturday it was unclear uh, Mohamed Kudus was going to be in camp. Uh, that was the update by way uh, from our sources. And what we are also made to understand is that his club appears a bit reluctant. I have personally written to his club, Ajax Amsterdam. And I'm yet to get a response from them. I just actually wanted to know the position, official position of the club. And the club is yet to respond to my, my, my email that I, was sent to, uh, that I was sent to them a couple of days ago. Hopefully, they would get back to me. And when they do, I'll be able to tell you some more. But what we can report to you is that Mohamed Kudus is not in camp. Sources have told us it is unclear he will be in camp. What we've been made to understand is that Ajax Amsterdam is unsure the Black Stars will progress. And even if the Black Stars progresses, they are reluctant to release him because the boy is just recovering from an injury. What we can also report is that Ajax Amsterdam at the moment cannot use the player. If they use him, it will be an infringement on the FIFA regulations of not releasing players to play for their national uh, team. So they cannot release Mohamed Kudus. Uh, they cannot keep Mohamed Kudus and play him in their matches. But should Ghana exit the tournament, they will be willing to use him as and when they are ready. Let's talk something little about the Black Stars starting lineup today. Um, none of you might have noticed that in the previous episodes where we talked about Ghana's probably lineup against Morocco, Ghana's lineup against Gabon. Indeed, there was 100% success for the one against Gabon, but we missed out one player in the one against uh, Morocco. So hopefully today, what we are going to deliver to you would probably be another 100% success, but if there's going to be an omission, it's just going to be maybe one. Well, so this is it. With the absence of Abagna Sandan, with the absence of Mubarak Wakaso, with the absence of Baba Idrisu, these players are injured, so they are not going to feature in this match. The last couple of days, uh, Wakaso had uh, ice packs on his legs, so he's not available. Yesterday, he trained with the team. However, he, he did not complete the entire duration. He had to step out a bit. So, the biggest story that we have picked up so far indicates that there's the possibility that Fatah Isaac will start this game against uh, Comoros. Uh, what sources have told us is that he's likely to operate from the right wing, whilst we are going to have Kamal Din Suleiman also at the, at the left wing, with um, Jordan Ayu and Andrea Ayu uh, in there. So, Andrea Ayu is likely to play behind his 
his younger brother. So that is by way of little information we've gathered. So this is the starting lineup so far per sources close to us. So in goalpost, Jojo Walakot is going to be there. There's Andy Yadom, there's Amati, Alexander Jiku, and Barada Man. In the heart of midfield, we are going to have Edmond Abdul come in to partner Thomas Partey. And upfield, we are going to have Fatal Isahagu on the right. Then we'll have Andrew Ayu in the middle. We'll have Kamal Din Somao on the left. Then we'll have Joran Ayu leading the attack. That is the detail details we've picked up so far. Should Fatal Isahagu not start? Though we are very hopeful he will start, per what sources have told us. If he doesn't start, what it mean is that Joseph Pencil will be restored into the starting lineup. But per what we've picked up within the decision making bodies on who play and who does not play, it is likely Fatal Isako is starting this game against Comoros on Tuesday night. The hope is that Ghana qualifies. Ghana should win by not just more than, uh, but not less than one goal. If, if they want to stand a chance of qualifying to the, the next phase of, of the tournament. We need to have the best four third-place teams that can progress. And Ghana could be part of it, depending on the outcome of the game against Comoro. Should they also fail to win, the possibility of exiting the tournament is very high. As always, we appreciate your time. As always, we say thank you for patronizing us. And as always, we'll make sure that as and when the Black Stars have an assignment, we'll nose into the team and come up with the credible information you've always been looking for. I am Muftar Nabila Abla, and this is Muftar Nabila Abla YouTube channel. I bring you African moments. On this platform, we say we are the home of exclusivity, and we'll try as much as we can to always share the best of stories with you. Thank you for your company. Now, let's talk about the Black Stars starting a lineup. The area many of you are so interested in. Um, I can report to you that. Um, David Abagna Sindan is injured. Murak Castle is injured. Baba Idris is, is also injured. These three players are not available for selection today. So who is likely to play in place of Baba Idris? The person likely to play per what we've picked up within the decision-making body of who plays and who does not play is that Edmond Ado is going to be in there and he's going to partner Thomas Partey. We've, we're also made to understand that there's a possibility that uh, um, this, this, this player from Portugal, uh, whose name has just skipped my mind, um, uh, is it Abdul Hamid? I've forgotten his, his, his other name. We are made to understand that he's also likely to play. Then we, we were also made to understand that Andy Yadam, who got injured, has fully recovered and he's going to play. So Andy Yadam is going to play. If Andy Yadam does not play, Amate is likely to be shifted to right back. But we are picking up intel that there's a possibility that uh, the coach might, might move Thomas Partey upfield and let Mon Monado partner maybe uh, Daniel Amate uh, in, this, in, in, in the heart of the midfield. And then Thomas Partey will be upfield. Then there's going to be Kamal Dean. There's going to be Joseph. Joseph Pinsel is going to be restored into the starting lineup. That's what we've picked so far. Tre is going to start. The Ayu brothers, Jordan and Andre, are all going to start in this fixture. We are also picking up intel that at this point, Milovan Ravage feels the tournament has become really, really difficult for him to use youngsters. So it is unclear if Fatal Isahaku could feature in this game. But what we've picked up is that there's a possibility Fatal Isahaku could be brought on much earlier. And that's something of you have been in interested in. They've been asking questions, why is Fatal Isahaku not playing and all that. Yes, he's not going to start, that we can report. But we, what we do know is that he's likely to have more minutes, depending on how the game against Comoros will go. Milovan Rival is optimistic he will qualify. Qualification is dependent on what is going to happen on the pitch and not his hopes. So the back line, once again, Jojo Walla caught in post, Andy Yodom, Daniel Amate, Alexander Jiku, then Bauraman. Then we'll have Thomas Partey and Edmond Addo. Like I mentioned earlier, if there's going to be changes in that area, we're going to have... Um, uh, oh. What's the name of this player that I keep forgetting? Pause it, pause it. Let me remember the player.